Every class is made up of a variety of students, some being known as the class clown and others as the high achievers. Today we are focusing on the daydreaming student. Characteristics of the daydreamer include inattentiveness, lack of participation in classroom activities, one who is easily distracted, chooses to doodle or draw instead of completing assignments, and often stares off into space. There are several possible causes that can lead to this behavior. These include boredom, improper nutrition, frustration with material, the student already having mastered the material being taught, being overly stimulated by the surrounding environment, and lack of sleep. There are multiple ways to approach a student with this behavior. The Houston County Board of Education recommends that teachers deliver consequences and rewards more frequently and immediately for these students. Praise them often for specific accomplishments, place the student in close proximity to the teacher, and incorporate signals or verbal cues to keep the student on track. Taking into consideration the causes and solutions for dealing with the daydreaming student, this behavior can be handled effectively in the following manner. Approach the daydreaming student and reiterate instructions. Give the student individual responsibility of questions to answer. Remi remind them that in a little while, the class will be rejoining as a whole and you will expect answers from them. Ask if the student has any questions and leave them to the work. Keep an eye on them. Ensure that you check in with the student at least once and verbally reinforce their good work. Good morning, class. How was your afternoon yesterday? Good. Good. Okay, well today in reading we're going to be working on applying and using our new vocabulary from the books that I have here for us, okay? Does that sound good? So I'm going to give you a handout, and with this handout you're going to find words that you don't think you know in here and write them down, and then we're going to turn it over and work on some questions later on. Does that sound good? Perfect. Here's your handout. You go ahead and be in charge of one and two, and Maddie, you're in charge of three and four. Hey Maddie, how are you doing? Good. Good. Mm -hmm. Well, you we haven't gotten past the first page, and I noticed some beautiful artwork here. Mm -hmm. So we need to not work on that. We need to stay focused and go ahead and work on this. Okay. Go ahead and go past the title page mm -hmm. and start finding some words like endless that you may not know. Okay. 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 Try to stay focused. Maddie, hmm? how you doing? Mm, okay. Okay, well, you're not very far, and I noticed that you need to keep working on because Jessica is going to be relying on you for those answers. In just a little bit, we're going to be coming back as a class and working on them, okay? okay? You need to be responsible for the assignment I've provided you, all right? Um, well, but what exactly are we supposed to be doing? Oh, were you paying attention during the instructions? Mm. Not really. Okay, well, let's come back to this. I've asked you to do number three and four, mm -hmm. and in just a little bit, we're going to be switching answers with each other, okay? Okay. Okay, so get positioned okay. and get ready to work, all right? Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. I see that you already have seven words down here that you haven't you haven't been able to recognize in this book. Are you feeling comfortable with this? Mm -hmm. Good, awesome. Okay. Well, then I'll give you a few more minutes, and we'll carry you back as a class together. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Good okay. job, Maddie. Thank you. Giving the students something to be accountable for will motivate them to complete the assignment. Verbal reinforcement will communicate to the student that they are rewarded for following expectations. 
Another effective way to address this behavior is to take a proactive approach to prevent the student from engaging in the behavior. students who daydream will allow them to actively participate, reducing the likelihood that they will engage in daydreaming behavior. As demonstrated here, three central components exist when it comes to effectively addressing the behaviors of the daydreaming student. Establishing clear directions and expectations, holding the student to those directions and expectations, reiterating them to remind the student what they are supposed to be doing, and positively reinforcing the student with verbal praise when they engage in appropriate behavior. 